When it comes to photography editing software, there are plenty of options out there, but no matter if you are a beginner or professional, keeping your shots and shoots organized is as important a step as editing the images themselves. This is why for me, Adobe's Lightroom comes out on top. We've already covered the basics and benefits for beginners and intermediate users of Lightroom, so in this video we're going to take a look at the professional workflow for professional photographers. As a professional, you should be doing everything you can to streamline your workflow, and some of these practices are what we're going to be looking at in this video. We'll start off by looking at catalogues. For most photographers, a single catalogue will be fine. However, there are a few reasons why you might want to use more than one. I work with multiple catalogues. One for my regular photography work, which includes travel, dog photography, and a few other subjects. And I also have several other catalogues which contain work for specific clients. I use separate catalogues for each of my clients because the images in each of the client's catalogues will likely be of pre-released products or projects. So if I had just the one catalogue, I'd run the risk of these images being seen whilst viewing or editing my work in a public space. Also, when going through work with clients, I wouldn't want them to be able to see the products from other companies. So really, just make the decision that suits you as a photographer. As I said, for most photographers, one single catalogue is absolutely fine. Another option when it comes to catalogues is to create one per project, and during the export phase, you're able to export the images into another catalogue. This means you'll have one master catalogue for the client and separate ones for each of the individual projects, meaning you could easily archive that work once the project is done. When it comes to importing your images, I've already covered the basics in the first two videos, but I'm going to reiterate some of the really important steps that you should be taking as a professional. One of those steps is to start tagging your images based on your shoots or shots. It might not be something that you use at the moment, but it's better to do this now than need to do this at a later date with all of your previous imports, which, depending on how many photographs you take, could be thousands of images. Doing this now, will help locate specific images based on the content of the shoot or shot and can be done over multiple folders. As a professional, you'll likely have your own style of edits, so save yourself some time and apply these looks during the import phase. This will give you a good idea of the look whilst you're selecting your shots and at least will give you a good base edit to work from. And of course, it goes without saying, but make sure you're backing your images up onto a separate drive. Now you can do this very quickly and easily in Lightroom or you can use a separate program to do it outside of Lightroom. When it comes to selecting your shots, it's important to take the best of the best through to the edit module. An efficient way to do this is by selecting your initial favorites using the star rating tool. Here, I either pick my favorite with a five star rating or I don't star it at all. If you end up with some shots that are similar, then make sure you use the survey tool to get your shots down to a selection that you're really happy with and get rid of any duplicates. When it comes to editing, Make sure you're working through your image and edit panels methodically. I always start with a good base edit using the curves. This allows me to control the highlights, mids and darker areas sympathetically to each other. And a good S shape should get you well on your way to creating a good edit. If you have some areas of the shot that are a little blown out or a little too dark, then make sure you either use the brush, radial or graduator tool to balance out the exposure. In this image, for example, I'd get the foreground to a good position and use the brush tool to work on the sky to bring a little more drama to suit the scene. When using the brush tool, set the flow to about 20 to 30% with a good feather. This way you can paint the effect heavier in the areas that need it more, meaning you don't need to use multiple brush layers to get the same effect. Once you've completed the edit of your first image, you can look at creating a preset to use on the rest of your images from that shoot. We've already touched upon working with presets, and I can't promote this workflow strongly enough. As a photographer, my aim is to deliver my clients a set of images that really stand out. Part of this is giving them images that look like a series of shots that complement each other. So using a preset will give you that base look and feel to your shots. Otherwise, if you end up editing all of your images from scratch, you'll likely end up with a bunch of shots that look like they've been done by different people. Even if you don't want to duplicate a look from a previous project, you can always create a unique edit for the last project and create a preset to use across all of the images from that shoot. And doing this couldn't be easier. There are two options here, either make a quick preset using the Command or Alt, as well as the Shift and C key. This will bring up this pop-up window, where you can select the parts of the edit that you want to copy. If you want a more long-term preset, then click the plus button at the top right of the preset box. This same box will pop up, and again, select the parts you want to copy into the preset. 
Once the preset has been named and created, you're then able to apply it onto the rest of your shots, giving you a good starting point to work from with those images. For those images that need some extra work, there's a good short trip to get your selected shots into Photoshop. With the image selected, press the Ctrl or Command key, as well as the E key, and that will open up the shot in Photoshop. After all of your shots have been edited, you'll be ready to export, and this stage might be also a good time to start pushing your images into Smart Collections. I use Smart Collections to group together certain images for different outputs, so if I want to have a selection of shots from different shoots that appear on my website, or if I have images that I want to use on social channels, then I'll colour code them green. These will automatically be pulled into different collections, so I can not only export them all in one go, but I can also see which images have already gone into those two outputs. To do this, just hit the plus in the collections box and create a new smart collection. Set the parameters that you want for your images, so for example, five star rating, edited and blue, and this will pull all of those shots into one folder. Depending on the client, you might also want to create a contact sheet of your shots. This is really straightforward to do in Lightroom. Firstly, make sure you've selected the right folder of images. This could also be a smart collection. If it's a series of shots, then select the ones that you want to pick from that folder or collection then head over to the print module. Once you're there, in the layout tab, select single image stroke contact sheet. From there, select the parameters in the other tabs to suit your needs for the contact sheet. Once you're happy with how it looks in the preview section, it's ready to export. And you can do this by setting up the printer options, which for me would be to create a PDF, then export by clicking the print button. Exporting your edited images is another area of Lightroom where you should be getting the software to do a lot of the legwork for you. So as normal with exporting, select your shots, open the export panel, and start creating presets depending on the destinations for the images. I have a separate preset for my printing needs. This has been created by the print company that I use and allows me to easily export my images to their needs. I also have ones for things like social outputs and different parts of my websites. And once all your presets are created, you can easily and simply export all of your images to the same parameters every single time. This includes adding things like watermarks, for example. I really hope you found that video useful. It's a good starting point for a professional workflow. And if you want to bolster your skills in Lightroom a little further, then make sure you check out the rest of the tips series with Wexphoto Video.